All right, welcome to Slash FF Revamp Season, <laughs> season 10 of League of Legends, Episode 1. Um, so we're doing this right before the weekend of LCS. Uh, well, I guess the, during the week before the first weekend of LCS. This is going to be uh, recorded on the 21st of March, 2020. Um, and yeah, uh, we're mostly going to be doing a breakdown for LCS. We might discuss some other things later on if we have the feeling to, but right now, um, we're going to start off just going roster by roster because um, now the rosters have been finalized. We did a video beforehand um, a while ago in December talking about the power rankings based that we did each of the players. That was a more for fun thing and also a huge audio issues on my end for that. So uh, yeah, let's start with 100 Thieves. Um, <clears throat> starting with the roster, so we'll read it off, is Someday, Medios, Ryoma, Cody Sun, Stunt, and Zix. Um, I mean, do you want to start off? Because you had big, uh, you had a lot of opinions regarding stunt. Uh, yeah. So, the hundred thieves team to me, I don't think they're gonna be a fucking barn burner. But I don't think they're gonna. Be, I think they're gonna be. I don't know, pretty decent. I think they actually finish top five. I think they maybe squeak in in fifth. I just think that with Papa Smith in there and maybe a culture change, I think you you have some proven quantity, uh, like quantities and medios and uh and uh fucking cody sun and someday but then you get a really big question mark around mid lane and then support but i'm actually more confident with support than i am mid because a stunt i feel has always been one of those players who's been around you've heard his name but he's never really gotten the the true sh the true shot that i think he like deserves to be on a good team He's kind of in the same category as like Golden Glue, where he gets written off because he's on a he gets like a start in a bad team and he doesn't really have a chance to like show himself. So, because Stunt last started for well, FlyQuest in 2017, but or 2018, but I count more of his P1 as uh, his last actual start. But he's good friends with Cody's son. They seem to get along well, and I, I think they can honestly perform. So. I'm more excited on uh, 100 Thieves this year than I was last year. Even last year, I drank the Kool-Aid early, and it punished me. This year, I'm going to go with a, yeah. a safe tentative. For most of the teams, we're like 100 Thieves. Um, <coughs> I, I, I'm going to compare them to the iteration like in 2019, but specifically for 100 Thieves, I actually think it's more interesting if we compare it to 2018 because we have a lot more pieces that are similar to 2018, so I think it's a bit easier to translate. Because um, the 2019 roster is pretty much completely different. Uh, but if we look back at 2018, we had Someday Medios, Cody Sun, and in the spring split, they were able to get to second place. That was with Ryu and Aphromu. And then in the summer split, they started dropping off, but there was a lot of factors going into that. The spring split, however, a lot of their wins came through the fact that they would play for late. Um, they kind of stabilized, let Cody get fed through just naturally farming or some good um some decent team fights and then someday could play weak side carry so a very interesting like dynamic in the fact that he could play champions like Jax, but he was also weak side they didn't want to play around him as the true carry of the team right um when i look at this team d do you think it's if, if you were to pit this team against the 2018 100 thieves you know with ryu and aframu what, what do you think uh, yeah what do you think of the potential of Ryoma and Stunt, I guess, in that aspect. Um, well, if we're comparing in in their primes, I would say the 2018 team, mm -hmm. just because that was like that was prime after me. Like that spring split, he was he actually was playing really nuts. Like he yeah. it was really strong. He was MVP <coughs> right? spring 2018. Yeah, he was MVP of spring uh, spring 2018. <clears throat> but I I don't know. I kind of like what how NA is kind of moving towards. <clears throat> trying out some of these lesser region players and how the and hopefully maybe it doesn't cost an import slot at some point here. They already changed the academy rules with like minor regions, but <clears throat> I kind of want to see these because uh, Loco Doco actually brought up in a video that um, there's kind of a logic behind getting these guys because they can't. It's not like you're bringing over someone from Korea who can always go back to Korea and play. Right. You're bringing over someone who, if they leave, like they have motivation to play well because if they leave, if they fail, they go back to where they were and they're making less money, and their league's a lot smaller, so it's not as good. He used the comparison <clears throat> of like a hard worker from a poorer country coming over. Yes. Yeah. So honestly, I think uh, Ryoma is going to 
dictate a lot of how Hunter of Thieves does this year. I think their bot lane is going to be pretty okay. And I think um, jungle top. Basically, every role I think is okay. But uh, it all comes down to mid, because I don't even know. I haven't seen it. I don't have any like games about Ryoma outside of uh, play-ins at Worlds 2017. I think with dire wolves. that um, Cody's son has improved as a player since 2018. Um, Mentally and and skill wise, yeah. I, I think he's like gotten better at like playing very safe. Um, but I don't know how good he is at like pushing necessarily a, a lead by himself. I do think that someday um, I can't necessarily know what his skill level is because you know he mo spent most of 2019 running academy and the issue with that is that while he played well he mostly just kind of did his job um one of the things though i do think is important is that while they lost a lot of their direction i do I, like um, regarding aframu right because aframu is always known as a big shot calling voice i think that medios playing on optic actually had to mature a lot in terms of what he wanted to do right so i think this iteration of hundred thieves will actually be a very medios led team as like the primary voice um, and I don't know necessarily if that's for better or worse, if that's going to end up developing Ryoma like very well. Um, but I do think because it's very Medios led that he will have to work with, uh, Ryoma because Ryoma is the mid laner. Um, and if they can, uh, I mean, if Medios has a good game sense still and they're able to get Ryoma on page, I actually think that that could be a very potentially good duo, uh, having an experienced jungler and a rookie mid with good mechanics. Yeah, Medios is going to lead that the mid jungle two v two. But I also know that from past uh, people talking that Stunt also is very vocal in what he wants oh. to do. He, he he's very if he I don't know they said he doesn't they don't know if he makes the right call all the time. This was the uh, hundred. But, uh, this was on the hotline lead, right? That uh, yeah, stunt, yeah. I believe so. But uh, yeah, so I'm interested to see how this team does. And it's kind yeah. of exciting to see a mix of young and old. Yeah, I mean, if anything, like I said, I do think that they have some uh, some very consistent pieces in Cody, Medios, and Sunday. Um, that being said, we'll have to take a look at the rest of the teams to see how far consistent it gets you. But uh, up next is Cloud9 with the roster of uh, Licorice, Blabber, Niski, Zven, Vulcan, and Reaper as the coach. Oh, and one last thing for 100 Thieves. Um, I can't necessarily know how good Zix is, uh, and th so I don't have much to say on that. Um, he seemed to perform well on TSM in the spring, but by the summer, it kind of seemed like he was let go of the coaching staff, so I don't really have much of a prediction on Zix. I don't know if you have anything to add about Zix. Uh, Zix is a good coach. He gets a lot out of his players. Um, it just seemed that TSM... <clears throat> I feel like TSM... I don't know this 100% because I'm... Obviously, I don't have connections, but it just seems like from people, uh, uh, like content and podcasts, it's like that the TSM has the TSM style... And as much as TSM wants to go hands off and give their coaching to someone else, it always seems like Reggie and Parth always end up basically like, Hating. yeah, it's like when you tell someone in like in your group, like, oh, you do this part of the project, but then you have to hover over them to make sure they're doing it up to your standards. And then you just end up doing it yourself. And that's kind of like that's the culture that's always. Really yeah, important. that seems like how TSM has always functioned. They, they brought in Zix, and it seemed like they didn't let Zix do his thing, and instead they they kind of just sat over his shoulder, and right when they started like losing a game or two, instantly it was like, oh, now Parth and that other guy joined in. I forgot his name. Uh, Peter Zhang, yeah. I mean, as a stranger, it'll always be confusing, because from what it seemed like, um, I mean, even from statements from such as Lena, who said that Spring was an overperformance, it did seem like Zix uh, probably did a very good job. And from an outsider, it would be very confusing as to why he was let go. So uh, we can't really make great claims on that. Anyways, back to Cloud9. Um, the pickups pretty much, uh, we have Blabber coming in from the Academy team, of course, playing with Cloud9 in 2018, uh, when he was d d uh, with the Jensen mid-jungle duo, and 2019 briefly um, in summer and during Worlds. And then, uh, new to the team, we have Sven and Vulcan. Sven coming over from TSM, and Vulcan um, coming over from Clutch, which was also Dignitas. Um, yeah, I, I have high hopes for um, Sven improving, uh, or at least going back to form, because I, I think a lot of people don't remember that um, Sven was very much uh, a pretty, he was playing pretty well, actually, toward the end of um, uh, the summer split, I think, uh, or not necessarily summer, but like during the gauntlet uh, in that clutch series. Um, 
And I, I don't think that was on him necessarily. Like, I think spring, yeah, Sven did a bunch of, you know, he had those throws um, in Game 5 versus Team Liquid. But he definitely, in 2019, did way better, in my opinion, than 2018. Um, I think Vulcan came in very strong. Um, my biggest question mark for this team is actually how Niski and Blabber uh, will um, play well. Because one of the things is that while Niski, while Niski and Blabber like could potentially be a very strong mid jungle duo because Blabber is very aggressive, Niski likes to roam a lot and make things happen. Um, you know, early jungle two v two. A lot of that last split was the fact that Sven Skirin was also very good, right? So I'm not completely sold on the idea that Blabber and Niski can do the same thing that Sven and Niski did. Yeah, C9 to me is a. Uh... I don't know how to feel about them. I think they're my highest variance top five team mm -hmm. out of like the predicted top five. I think they could honestly be anywhere from second, well, in theory, first to like eighth. It's strange to me that a lot of people put them like solidly second. Yeah, I think on paper this team functions, but I don't think we've seen enough of Blabber. And this team lost Sneaky and now has younger players in Vulcan. And now you have, uh, you want to see Licorice step up here. But then again, Blaver seems to play around mid. And Blaver seems high variant. Seems like if he pops off, he pops off. If he ins, he ins. And then the game kind of just snowballs out of control. Uh, Zven, I think, personally, I think we've seen the peak Zven. I think he can get back to form. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think, I don't think there's much, like, improvement for him outside of improving from his last year's performance. I don't think that he's going to become this legendary ADC anytime soon. I think Vulcan was a good pickup. Obviously, they didn't like Zazel since they spent so much on on uh, Vulcan. But Vulcan, he's a playmaker, so <clears throat> if we ever see a meta that is like casters, I don't know how good Vulcan's going to be. But if you need him to play Alistar, you need him to play Rakan. He's a very, very good at those. Not so, too, yeah. Leo, yeah. He, he engage. <clears throat> I'm interested to see how this team functions without Sven Skarin and Niski being kind of the cool points of the the veteran leadership. Yeah, I, um, I. I don't know if I don't. I personally don't know if I think Licorice is a is an in game leader or like a leader outside of game either. He seems kind of to himself sometimes and seems quiet and and uh, afraid to like call people out and stuff. So I'm very interested to see how this team goes. I think personally, I would not put them solidly number two. I think they're, uh, I think I'd put them, I don't know, maybe three or something confidently. Yeah. So on that point, you know, I agree with you. It is very, it's still very weird to me that people put them solidly at number two, but I think that a lot of people also bind to this narrative that, I mean, I know, like, this is, like, kind of a fan narrative, but I know sometimes analysts will talk about it, like, Sven coming from a high-stress environment from TSM, much like Sven Skarin did, um, and then going to Cloud9, and maybe, oh, maybe it's, like, Sven Skarin again, where he becomes a great player. I, I don't, you know, I, I think that has to do a lot more specifically with what TSM wanted out of a jungler. I don't necessarily know if, you know, just because you get an AD carry from TSM, that means, like, the same trend will repeat i think sven compared to sneaky is <clears throat> kind of a side grade um obviously if sven gets to his peak form yes you could say it's an upgrade but um there's also you know peak form sneaky which i don't think we saw toward the end of last year i think vulcan definitely an upgrade over zazel uh we saw zazel falter a bit but um zazel was also a big voice uh, if i recall um, people talking about on the team and losing both sven uh, or sven Skarin and zazel um, you know, you brought up a good point is that who is kind of like the in-game leader of this team, right? Is Niski going to be the leader now? I mean, he's, he, uh, Licorice is the most senior member, but you, you pointed out that he seems rather quiet. I mean, he, he's kind of the top laner. He doesn't have much to, uh, go on for the game, right? So does that make Niski the biggest voice on the team? I mean, I, I don't know if, I, I don't know how good or bad that's necessarily going to be. Yeah. This so, team also has, seems like it's going to have a big culture change because, mm -hmm. Jack deciding to get rid of Sneaky may, makes me think, anyways, that he's trying to. He's done with like the old. being like the second place team and like being kind of like the meme team, fun te for fun team or whatever. Because Niski was a memer, Zazel, Blabber's a huge memer. He's still on the team. Niski's a memer, so those two are still memeing. But Zven does not give me that vibe at all. Vulcan doesn't really give me that vibe at all. Licorice. 
I, he did. It seemed like he kind of like memed a little bit last season, but I think Lillard I think to turn it on and off. <clears throat> yeah, so I think it's going to be very strange what happens when if they start losing and Blabber's still cracking jokes and Zvan and Vulcan are trying their ass off. I think it might be a might be an interesting dynamic between that how that team functions because yeah. it seems like Zvan has always been a very serious person, a very works very hard. Vulcan also I've heard is very works very hard. He's also very serious. And then you have Blabber and Niski kind of just like the clowns. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of clowning around in mid lane. So I'm interested to see how this team goes anyways. All right, well we'll move on to the next team then. This is going to be CLG and we have Ruin, Wiggly, Crown, Stixay, Smoothie and Song as the coach. Um the first thing is that I think that if we look at the 20, uh, 2019 roster where they had PoE, um, a lot of people instantly say like Crown is a big upgrade to PoE, but I think that in terms of being like an in-game leader for Wiggly, PoE actually like he's very particular about what he wants his jungler to do, for better or worse. You know, there, there's sometimes I know it tilted the shit out of um, Acadian on Optic. Uh, they had a huge argument over like just a ward. You know, that was discussed uh, last year spring. Um, and then having Crown in, I do think Crown is slightly better than PoE, but I think that um, he might not necessarily be able to communicate the same way. And going from Bio to Smoothie, I do think Bio to Smoothie makes sense in terms of you want a uh, if you wanted an in-game leader. Um, but the thing is, like Stixe is a very uh, Stixe wants to carry right, and I think Bio makes a bit more sense as a support to um, lane with someone who really wants to like carry and you know go in and just uh, yeah just get the resources. So while CLG, I actually do think their roster is pretty talented overall. I'm not completely certain. Um, like, I think Smoothie has to drive a lot of the in-game direction, but I don't know how they play out the early game with Crown, Wiggly, and Ruin. Yeah, I think this team is really good on paper. I think they actually are to be decent, personally, but I think that also relies on a big step up this year from Wiggly. Like, Wiggly, last year in Gauntlet and playoffs, did not perform yeah. and if we and if this team wants to perform at a high level a lot of it comes down to wiggly i think he's got to he's got to really step up and play how he did because <clears throat> ruin's gonna play his weak side stick and smoothie seem like they're gonna try to dominate bot lane and crown's gonna try to do his thing i just think that crown personally is an upgrade from poe i think poe likes to play how he wants to play he likes to play his champs and i feel like sometimes he tries to pick in some weird shit that doesn't function and the team has a hard time playing with. So I'm think this I think Crown's actually an upgrade. Yeah. But not 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 that much, but still. Um another thing is like on stage, uh Ruin didn't necessarily have his performance seemed to decline over time. Uh but I know that for example Double Lift was saying like, Oh, Ruin's insane. Like whenever they scrimmed CLG last year and Ruin would swap to mid, he'd like solo kill Jensen. I haven't seen that translate to stage. Um so the, I mean you know, there's there's good scrim results from that, but I can't say much because I, I don't even think Ruin should have been the third all pro uh, last summer. So I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I have a hard time uh, evaluating that. And the other thing is the loss of um, Irene. You know, Irene was credited as being a very big part of their team because um, uh, who, who's their their head coach? Um, the psychology guy, uh, Weldon. Weldon. Yeah, Weldon's. Um, you know, he's well known for helping teams out, such as TSM, such as G two, um, and he seems to be a good. Uh, kind of like Papa Smithy, a, a very good uh, leader in terms of due to his background and due to being able to get um, players to uh, work through player problems. Um, they need a strong uh, person with game knowledge. And I think Irene fit that, and Song is going to be put up to the test here because Song was on that Immortals roster that was very dominant, but then they couldn't do much in playoffs. You know, I don't know if how much that is on Song versus like the player's own ego. You know, that was the roster with Huni. And then you have Song on TSM, which you have the TSM, you know, roster, or you have the whole TSM um, dynamic where they have an encroaching style that kind of pushes out with the coach's own ideas. You have a move to Echo Fox, kind of a dumpster fire. So it's really hard to say, like, how well Song does. But given the fact that there's, like, two Korean players on here, given the fact that they have good uh, support in the in uh, Weldon and the roster is pretty, um, pretty talented, I do think this is kind of like a last shot in terms of, like, Song and his career, at least in NA. You know, I, I can't imagine um, 
him having much more praise if this roster doesn't uh, succeed. Yeah. All right, uh, moving on, Dignitas, next team. We have 2.3 mil Huni in the top lane, Grigne in the jungle, Froggen in the mid lane, Johnson bot lane, and Afrumu support with coach. It doesn't say it on Leaguepedia, but I believe um, ThinkCard is their coach. And, you know, I, I don't want to bring Academy into this, but I think it is important to note <laughs> Dignitas Academy because they probably have one of the better – um, academy teams in terms of like picking players out of so mid lane we have demonte um 80 care we have phoenix uh, um their top laner is i believe it's uh wh what's his face he was on golden lorlo lorlo yeah um and then i jungle and support were also like acadian acadian and Af and uh no, 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 ole no, no, ole ole okay yeah so Man, uh, th so this is the highest, uh, one of the more higher variance rosters, um, mostly because I think that like, okay, so there's a couple of factors here, right? If, if, we, if we, let's start with what we did before, where we compare this roster to 2019 Dignitas. So we have Huni, you know, same guy. We have Grig and Lyra. Um, I don't know, Lyra <coughs> kind of like figured out what his job was toward the end of the split. And I think toward the end of the split, Lyra started doing better than what Grig did. But overall, um, in theory, this is kind of like, well, we don't really know how good Grigne is because the, the whole TSM situation was kind of weird. Um, Froggen, uh, I do think, is an upgrade over DeMonte in some aspects. But in, the problem is that um, when you, uh, 2019 Dick had like a very particular style and what they wanted to do, and DeMonte really wanted to like play like Niski kind of, where he kind of leaves lane and wants to fight early. Froggen is not like that. <laughs> so... While I think Froggen's a better mid laner, it is a definite style change for what they can expect out of the mid laner. Uh, Johnson, um, rookie coming in, I, I would not consider an upgrade over Cody Sun unless he like is extremely good, but you can never necessarily know that with rookie talent. And then Aphromu, I would say, is more vocal than Vulcan, but um, a Vulcan definitely had a better split uh, in 2019. So all in all, like the roster is... Again, just it's not a necessarily a huge upgrade over last year, but I, I don't think it's a huge downgrade either. It just adds a lot of variables that um, can, can, is is very risky for how expensive the roster is. And while I do again, I, I don't think this roster is like bad per se. I just think it's risky um, because of how many variables uh, kind of have to go right here. You know, you you have to have Frog and synergize with Cooney in terms of their play styles, which necess doesn't necessarily, like, that's not inherently, like, they can't play well together, you know, Froggen being a very, like, lane-focused champion, and Huni wanting a lot of resources to also, like, uh, hey, jungler, come up here, whereas Froggen just kind of wants to sit in his lane. That could work together, but then there's also other times where that might not necessarily work together. So I, I don't know. This team, I've seen people put in the top four. I've seen put as, like, ninth place. Uh, I'm sure you have very negative opinions, Will. Uh, where is your... Uh, What's your feeling on Dig? I think this team is a dumpster fire waiting to happen. Okay. I think you have just a clash of so many different styles of play. And I think you honestly get into a big problem when you go into the draft. Because Froggen is not known to be the guy that can do these meta flex picks. And Huni also, it doesn't seem like he's very strong. Because either like Akali, how are you gonna flex that between Frog and and mm -hmm. Huni? Huni doesn't perform well on Akali, uh, and Froggen has never played Akali in LCS. I feel like Huni wants his champs, Froggen likes his champs, and then you have uh, just a big question mark jungler on both their academy side. And I think they're I think Kadian's actually better than Grig, but I think Grig fits more of their style, what they're looking for with this main roster. Mm -hmm. Uh, Johnson, uh, he's a question mark. Haven't, haven't seen him play. Apparently him and Afrimo haven't even played together yet because of visa issues. <clears throat> um, Afro, who's Afro, you kind of know at this point in his career. Um, yeah, I just think there's a lot of personality on this team. A lot of voices. Huni want, Huni, and I feel like Huni, Afrimo, Froggen. There's going to be a lot of clashing between those three on what they want to do. And I feel like Grig is, he's the jungler. But if he's vocal in that team too, and I don't know, man, it's going to be a very big question. I think this team's feast or famine. I think they either are going to be nuts or they're going to be fucking atrocious. I think the problem with them being nuts is that there's too many things to go right for them being nuts. 
So. Yeah, that, yeah, they they have so many things have to happen. So it's like players have to put aside their ego. Year, you know, where like they yeah. they come in like and they're just ninth or tenth, pretty much spring split, and it it took them the entire year, change of coaching staff, everything to get you know into their uh, world's form. Yeah, so. yeah, I think this game, this team takes a few surprise games, but I I don't see them doing well at all. I just don't know. This team reminds me a lot of there's a there is an NBA team. Uh, that I'm not whatever. Uh, but there's an NBA team that basically they they once the Miami Heat made super teams, they brought in these players and it was the same thing. You brought in a bunch of stars and with a lot of a lot of egos, a lot of how they want to play the game, and then egos clash and the team fucking suck. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think of uh, uh, like Dignitas of of the teams that have <coughs> talent and are variable, which in my opinion is like Dig Cloud Nine TSM. I think Dig is the one that has like the lowest point in, because even with the amount of talent they have, they also have the lowest point of just clashing <coughs> and having players that might not play well together in some situations. Yeah. All right. Um, next up, we have Evil Geniuses. So this is going to be Kumo in the top lane, Svenskir in jungle, Jizuke mid lane. <coughs> <laughs> the bot lane, Zazel support, and Irene is the coach. Um, I think a lot of te- a lot of people have EG hyped up, and I think some people also don't drink the Kool Aid. Like they have EG barely squeaking to playoffs. Um, personally, if I go player by player, I think Kumo is actually probably going to be a bottom two top laner. Uh, just looking at the other top laners in the league, um, he plays okay, and, and that's a bottom two top laner. I don't mean like he's bad. I just mean like. In terms of skill compared to the other top laners, he will be bottom two. That doesn't mean he's going to int every game. You know, he could play well weak side and just play tank and stuff like that. Sven Skarin and Jizuke, I actually think these two could play very well together given how aggressive Jizuke is and how um, aggressive Sven Skarin can be. Uh, it just it really depends on Jizuke's form. You know, we, we saw a really bad form from Jizuke in 2019. Uh, Bang, great weak side player. Um, so if, if they want Sven and Jizuke, you know, it's just mid-jungle. Uh, Bang can play weak side really great, and he started doing better toward the latter half of 2019. Um, but I am, I am concerned about Zazel. Zazel, uh, his performance was getting worse as 2019 went on. Um, I mean, it's kind of why Cloud9 scrapped him for Vulcan. So I think because this team is a new roster, I have a hard time believing that off the bat they're going to be like this insane team, especially given the fact that their bot lane and top laner aren't like insane carry players. It really has to like be Jazuki and Svenskeren coming out of the gate and doing a lot of the stuff right. Um, and the problem is if they play more of like a uh, like controlled style, which I don't think they would. I don't. I don't think Jazuki fits well into that. So there, there's some clashing on this uh, roster that. Yes, if they play it right, they can do really well, but they have to play to that style, like mid-jungle, almost always. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have much else to say about that. Um, I don't think they're yeah. extremely high variance, but I just I think they're a new roster. and it, it, like, I mean, We'll get into it later, but I think they're going to be middle of the pack somewhere with a few other teams. Yeah, I think EG is the... Uh, I think they're an interesting team. Because you have a strong piece in Sven Skarin, and then you have Kumo, who I feel like is just riding the coattails of being on C9 mm-hmm. to getting a starting spot, which is tough because this just gets into a whole conversation about uh, about rookies. Because in one sense, people talk about how uh, how we need to be like we need to be like Europe, and like you know, Europe has the their own like competitive, really competitive like a basically yeah, they have the EU where they can the yeah EU masters is very competitive and that you can really see, see talent it's really hard to see talent in in academy and kum when kumo played in the lcs loco doko brought this up in a video today he like he had really bad cs difference like he was taking picks like jace which is supposed to be kumo's best pick and he was only up like five cs at 15 minutes on losing matchups the game against impact that everyone talked about how Kumo popped off. Kumo was only up a couple CS. He was actually losing the matchup uh, until he got ganks from Svenskaren. So I think it's going to be... I think he's going to be bottom two top laner. And you want to see him develop... Right? Like, it's him and yeah. or Viper, pretty much. I think Viper's actually better. I think yeah, yeah, it could yeah, be I, him. I agree, and... which, is, which is why I think Kumo is probably going to be the 10th place like top laner. In the yeah. Because Viper showed some signs of life last year, depending on the game. But I think... Um, yeah, I, I think like it, it's rough because you want to see these these rookies play, but it's really tough because it's not going to really happen too much. I think until 
this entire culture change in North America. Right. Because all the North American teams want to win, they want to compete, because if you, you have down years, you lose fans, especially now that it's franchise and you want to get fans. You saw it happen to Golden Guardians after they bombed. Luckily, they have pretty decent, like, they kind of make up for it with their, like, reach to their community and they have decent merch, stuff like that. But these teams want to compete, so they don't want to take years of risking on North American rookies but there's also not a competitive league to really train these rookies. So the only time they're going to get anything actually useful is by playing in LCS. Mm -hmm. So Kumo's the only rookie this year, I believe technically besides Rioma. Yeah. I I personally, (coughs) but North American rookie. I I mean, I would consider him a rookie because he, unlike blabber, he didn't get significant play time. Um, Well, he, he kind of did because licorice's absence, but um, I mean like blabber was much more trusted for getting play time, but yeah, I think he's, Pretty much him and Stunt are the, uh, like, kind of the North American rookies. And I would say yeah. Stunt is, like, the most rookie one out of them. Yeah, because I don't see how this team really functions. Because if Kumo only has a 5 CS difference on winning matchups, he has to really step up this year. Because Bang is a weak side bot. If you have a weak side bot uh, and a weak top laner, then it all relies on your mid. And Jizuke wasn't the best for him. He's getting up there in age. Yeah. He plays a weird style that I feel like isn't really suited by... Is it going to be very complemented by the players on this roster? So I feel like they're actually going to be a lot weaker than we thought, which is kind of sad because Fenskaren, yeah. I like him. He's a good player. But uh, I think if Jazuke's form is good, though, they do have a pretty straightforward style, which is the fact that Sven just plays around Jazuke. I don't know if that's going to work necessarily, but I do think like if, yeah. if Jazuke comes in with better form... Jazuke needs to be on good form... Bang needs to. If Bang could play any sort of what he was like in Korea, that would be good too. <laughs> I don't think that's good. And Kumo, <laughs> and Kumo just literally needs to not, like, I don't know. I feel like he needs to learn either learn how to play other stuff that he can be weak side. But it seemed like when they played with him and uh, when he played, they tried making him look good, and even then he was really struggling to to gain advantage on yep. on high ver- high picks like. Jason. Like Jason stuff. It really reminded me of Darshan mm-hmm. asking for picks like Fiora and stuff like that, and then he wouldn't Darshan even get that much better than Kumo. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because Darshan actually shafted Kumo <laughs> in uh, in the academy. Okay. Well, I don't know. I watched him last year, but All right, well, Dardox, Dardox was Zion Spartan. Those academy let's playoffs. Move on from EG to FlyQuest now. Um, FlyQuest, the lineup being Viper, Santorin, Power of Evil, Wild Turtle, Ignar, and Curry. Um, I'm just going to go right off the bat. I don't really know much about Curry, so I can't speak much about their coach. I think that Ignar, um, he, I don't know, he was on uh, he was on Schalke, right, last year? It was, yes. It was him with, uh, it was him upset. With, upset, yeah. Um, I mean, I think Upset's a pretty good player, so I don't think Ignar <coughs> held his weight up as much. And I think this idea of bringing together Ignar and PoE is interesting, uh, but I, I don't think, uh, like, I, wow, I, I would have really have to know like what the contract details are to see if it's like worth the money for that. I think Santora and Wild Turtle are still good, but the problem is they had really declining performances in the summer split. I just think FlyQuest, like in theory, like their players are decent, but they're also not like top tier players either. So the problem is like if they have declining performances or just perform like middling, their team is kind of like meh, you know. And if they have kind of like a med team and it turns out like last year spring where every team um, is kind of like dropping off a bit and they're just consistent, I do think they can have that kind of performance. It's just, you know, it, it's, I, I don't know, like talent wise, their players seem like, it, it's weird to say like Santorum, PUE, Wild Turtle, and Ignar are meh, but once you compare it to the rest of the league, which we'll do later, I do think they're more like bottom half talent wise. Yeah, I think their team is... It's weird. I, I personally don't don't like PUE. I think PUE makes teams play a certain way that I think don't really complement anyone. I definitely don't think Santorin will like that. Santorin seems to me like a very confidence based player. Like he was nuts that first split and then he started like performing bad and I feel like he just got in his own head and then just went downhill from there. I think that you know, if you're if it's gonna like Santor is obviously a good player. He has three counts in the top twenty-five of Challenger in North America, or that just shows how bad North America is. One of the I two. Mean both. We can yeah, ground. but uh, yeah. So I think these are just a lot of like proven commodities 
Viper's basic. He's you know we're, we're he's a Viper. He's gonna improve, but I think after like uh, a year now, it's it's hard to like see that he's not the shy. You yeah, know, you kind of know that by now. Um, and I don't know how much more he could pro- possibly improve. Yeah, because if yeah, if Viper plays bad, then they're gonna bring in Revenge, who's basically the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't really. Yeah. He literally doesn't change the play style at all on their team. Yeah, like, and it's I, just I watched the same some shit. Academy games were Revenge. It's not like he was styling on people either. So. No, he he literally he. He kind of got brought down to earth on how good he was yeah. when he played against the camp. He overstayed a lot. He played really aggressive. He treated like he basically played like it was solo queue for the most part. Riven player. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see on this team. I think this team has a lot of known things. They're kind of just gonna get some wins here and there. I don't think they're gonna be anything special though. Yeah, I kind of lump FlyQuest in in the tier with like a hundred thieves and mortals FlyQuest as like the teams that. I think 100 Thieves is the best of them, but, like, if other teams in the league suffer a lot from, like, roster issues, then potentially, like, they could go up. It's just, the more that I think about FlyQuest, the more I think that PoE could potentially be problematic with <coughs> and, and, like, it might not make a lot of sense. So, I don't know. It, it's really hard to say, because the more I think about it, the more I'm kind of moving them out of that category. Yeah. It's just wonky, because this team has carries in every role. Yeah. Wild Turtle likes to play aggressive carries bot lane and win lane. Santorin likes to play carry junglers. Power of Evil likes to play his carries. And then Viper doesn't really... And it's not really a tank meta, so Viper doesn't really play tanks anyways. He played pretty bad last split on on picks like Orin and stuff. Like, he likes his Camille. He likes his his Riven. He likes to split push and, and pop off. But all of those players are carry champs. There's not enough to go around, I think. I think there's a lot of mouths to feed, and I think the players aren't good enough. And I think PoE especially can't probably won't be able to put aside his ego to perform yeah. with that kind of roster i think it's uh i think poe is literally just playing for a paycheck honestly at this mm-hmm. point yeah i mean the more Seems. i think about it the more i think this is like close to a dignitas situation where the players actually could have a lot of like turmoil you know because because yeah. last year's fly quest like i would say this roster has a bit more talent than last year's but the thing is last year i would say poe belter is a much better team player than poe so it's it's yeah. hard to equate that all right, so moving on, next team we have is Golden Guardians. We have Hauntzer, Closer, Golden Glue, FBI, Keith, and Anero. Um, so, I mean, I, I'll start on Anero is that I like Anero uh, from his Echo Fox days, but I do think it's weird that um, last year's Golden Guardians, they moved Anero down to Academy, and they brought in a different coach um, who was actually, like, they had a lot of internal respect for him from what it seemed, but then they moved Anero back up. They put um, they brought over Raz, the LPL caster, as the new Academy coach. So I, I don't really know how great of a coach Anero is, so I mean that's just a brief background on what was going on there. But um, as far as the rest of the roster, this is pretty much what most people consider the 10th place roster. You know, even if you have hope for this roster, it's like you have a lot of things that you need to go right here, right? Closer has to turn out to be a good player, which could happen 100%. Golden Glue has to turn out to be better than at least um, Aika and Ryoma, the other two like rookie imports they brought over. Um, FBI, we've seen him last year. He was a pretty good laning player, but it there was also a lot of fuck-ups he had, and Keith is just an unknown quantity for uh, for role swap. You know, that's something only Golden Guardians eternally can do. I think that Hauntzer is really good. I think he's, like, potentially... Yeah, it really depends. Like, sometimes his performance looks like it's top three. Sometimes he might just be the sixth best top laner, but he's really, like, the only strong point... known strong point on their team, in my opinion. Yeah, this team is... Yeah, what more can I say? This team is... Looks like the 10th place team. There are a team you want to root for, personally. It's a NA team outside of FBI yeah. and close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, uh, you're rooting for the one NA mid, Golden Glue. Everyone loves Golden Glue. Everyone loves Keith. You want to root for Keith. People are, I think, generally people like Hanser, I think. After his uh, PSM days, you know, he's chilled out. He's mellowed yeah. out. People like him a bit better. I mean, you still yeah. don't like his headband, but, you know. I don't like his headband. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, they have two OCE players, uh, this well, is closer a... is Turkish. Closer is from. Um... Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, he, they have a... two minor region players. Um, but FBI, I... you know, he's Australian. It's American. Enough. Yeah, I think this team. I don't know. I think if there was more teams in the league, you'd want to see teams like this that yeah. aren't afraid to maybe take a year off and develop talent. And this is what I think Golden Guards was originally trying to do. But then they got 10th place, and the players that they had on their team did not seem like they had any sort of, like, ability. You're talking about 2018 Golden Guardians, right? Yeah, because... 
Yeah, I think all those players were kind of proven at that point. Like, you weren't going to get much out of mm-hmm. Lolo and Deathly and stuff. Deathly was probably the only one that you might be able to get something out of. But this team, I feel like you you, you might see something out of these guys uh, and if down the line. I don't know. I just don't think this year is the year. I think they're going to be a fun team to watch, and it's a fun team to like kind of root for it, but I don't think they built to win. They're, I think they're here to. I think they're here to like get experience, develop players. That's why I feel like they brought Anero back to being the head coach because the whole reason they sent Anero down to academy is Anero and a Hotline League talked about how he liked, really likes developing players, and he felt like he wasn't able to get as much out of the main team because they had players like Froggen and Hauntzer, mm-hmm. okay, and players like that who are who are already like pretty much developed but this top this team now yeah four of their players are all open four of their players are are basically going to be he can basically mold this team to perform better okay so uh we'll we'll see how they do all right moving on we have immortals the french colony soaz x smithy ika altec hakuho and zabutin uh what can I say here? Um, I think that Altec is a good AD carry, but we haven't seen him in a while. Like, I mean, by good, I mean, like, he's he was decently consistent. I think Hakuho was one of the better <coughs> players when he was on form. Unfortunately, Echo Fox, you know, turned out pretty poorly for him. I think X-Smithy was one of the best junglers in the league, but um, I don't know how much he can support, like, the other players in this team. And I think Soaz, he had a bad year last year, but I, I, I still think he's, he's a good player. It's just I don't... I don't think he can just come to NA and just like, oh, he's going to pick a carry and style on people. Like, I, I don't think that's realistic. So the problem is like, okay, who's the firepower in this team? Is Ika going to be this French like superstar and he's going to come in as this super mid laner, you know, the new Bjergsen? I don't think so because he was in French League for a long time, right? And, and if he was that good, I think an EU team would have picked him up. Is Altec, after all, his Korean boot camping going to become the new double lift, like the insane American AD carry? Uh Maybe, but that's you know that's kind of a stretch, right? So it's there's things you could say about this team in a stretch. Like, sure, they have good players like Soaz, X Smithy, and Hakuho, but as far as like firepower and how they win games, I'm not completely certain. I think you have to kind of stretch the narrative a bit to kind of say like, oh, they're gonna win a game because of <coughs> this player. This player is gonna carry and pop off or play cons- like play very well. How does it feel that Immortals is a French colony? Will. Uh, not a big fan of the French, but you know we can we can look past that. Um, this team I think is probably the first or second best team in North America. Yeah, probably second okay. behind Team Liquid. No, I'm just kidding. Um, realistically, these guys. This basically comes down to can they find diamond? Can they take these quantities that people have kind of pushed off and been like, oh, these are known. And like make them into something. Yeah. Haku, I always have felt is a pretty Haku good player, good. but he's always on a bad team. Yeah. Uh, him and Altec have played together in the past. Back on, fuck was that team? I think it was Dig, right? Played mm, Dig back in the I'm day. Not sure. I don't have that long of LCS tenure history. Um. Yeah. So, I think, I personally think Altec has always been good. I think when they kicked him off Echo Fox, he was actually the sec- the third best AD carry that split when they kicked him. Yeah. Which was kind of dumb that they removed him for lost, yeah. but whatever. Uh, so I think Altec's actually a pretty good player. I have he hasn't played in a bit, so we'll see if he's up to competitive speed. But I like to root for him. I think their bot lane, if they play, if if Altec plays how he played before, maybe a little better than with a chip on his shoulder. Uh, I think this is a. I don't, know, I don't think this is actually a bad team. I think. He can maybe maybe do something. We'll see. Yeah, I just I don't want to drink. I don't think they're gonna win now. <laughs> they're not gonna win now for sure. Like I, I'm not like unless they play out of their minds. I don't think they'll win now. Soaz is consistent. Alltech and Hakuho seem to be consistent. Ike is a huge question mark. I think the same point as you made. I think if he was that good, he would have been uh, picked up out of French league. Picked up, especially EU teams are always looking for talent, but. Maybe they saw something. I know Zabatine knows something. Zabatine knows him. Saw the secret French sauce. Yeah, Zabatine knows him, so I, he's, I'm hoping this is, he can mold this guy to be a good player. I'm just hoping Immortals looks good. X Smithy, <laughs> you already know, best <laughs> fucking. Oh, best jungler. I, I don't know. Produced. I the the problem is like I don't want to drink the Soaz Kool Aid because even though he's a good <laughs> player, it's kind of like the Bang Kool Aid, right? He's like, he's a good player, but if you 
give him this kind of roster, what is he like? How is he supposed to like carry them? You know, I, I don't know. I just think it's gonna be weird having Soez if there's no. It doesn't seem like it's ever going back yeah, to thinking. I just so. don't know who. Like, yeah. All right. So we'll on. see. <clears throat> Team Liquid. We have Impact in the top lane. Poe Belter in the okay. Brock's in the jungle. Jensen mid lane. Double lift and Cordia J bot. Um. I mean, enough said. This team, most people... Yeah, dude, I was like, do we even have to talk about this? Yeah, like, okay, so here's the thing. People talk about, like, how, like, oh, you know, I don't think Team Liquid's going to uh, five-peat because, you know, uh, all dynasties have to fall. Okay, if I put a gun to your head and say, like, okay, what team wins the split? Are you going to say Team Liquid? Yeah, you're going to say Team Liquid, right? Because, because like, if you're making, like, minor bets or, like, some stupid stuff, like, oh, do you think Team Liquid's going to win the split? And people are like, oh, no, I don't think they'll win the split because, you know, five-peat, that's pretty impossible. But if I say gun to your head, who's winning the split? You're going to pretty much say TL, right? Because that's the best answer like that's objectively like that is the best answer you know just talent for talent if you look historically double lift you know the team that has him has pretty much won ever since the ts uh, tsm days there's only been two splits that he hasn't won recently and that was when he took the break for streaming 2017 spring and when he first left clg um in 2016 spring uh when they won with the sticks a roster Beside from that, 2015 somewhere onward was all double lift. It's all coming up double lift, guys. So gun to your head. You can make whatever reasons you want for why this team won't five peat. But if I say gun to your head, gun to your family's head, and you give me, you tell me a team that's winning the split, you will say Team Liquid, or you're delusional. That's just that's my two cents. Yeah, I think basically same as you. I think the only way, only way TL lose is if they lose motivation, yeah. or if they literally can't get. Uh, Brock's are Shurnfire to North America and Poe Balter's left jungling and if Poe Balter doesn't play well then maybe they, maybe they lose games and they don't win the split but I think for sure they're making playoffs I think for sure on paper if Broxa plays I think they 5 Pete. Uh, you know yeah. I mean you also want, you, you know I was saying like you're de- like delusion I, I, guys I don't I don't mean like it's imp- it's like impossible for another team to beat them. I just mean like given the fact that everything else is unknown you can't say that this is like Given everything else is unknown, that this team wouldn't be the best of the unknown like quantities, okay? Because this team yep. is very similar to roster to last year, except a jungle difference. And I know that could be a big thing that causes them to lose. But again, you're factoring in that everything else is unknown, um, and you're just going in blind. You have to like look at this roster, just like the talent they have. It's it's hard to say like another team would beat them just straight up unless things go right and things go wrong for Team Liquid. Yep. Okay, we'll move on to the team that will actually win the split. Team Solo mid, Broken Blade in the top lane, Dardock in the jungle, Bjergsen mid lane, Kabe AD carry, Biofrost support, and Peter Zhang is the coach. Um, so, yeah, I mean, TS, we might as well hand them the trophy now. Cringe, cringe. What do you think? I think this team realistically <laughs> has... It's very. We'll see what Dardock does. I think this team could equally be as Feaster Famine as uh, Cloud Nine and Dignitas. I think we'll we'll see how these we'll see how they play. I personally have no clue how they're going to perform. So. I think this team, if they didn't make playoffs, would shock me. If they didn't make top four, it would shock me. In fact, I think that. Yeah, I think they're for sure a lock for playoffs, but I think that um, very, I don't know if they perform as yeah. godly as people are think or like hyping. Honestly, my biggest question mark isn't even, like, Dardock or Kabe or Bio. It's actually Broken Blade. I think that, like, Broken Blade had this, like... He started off so well in Spring Split. Uh, he, he was actually... He was outperforming Impact a shit ton in these Spring Finals. And then Summer comes along and Broken Blade is just making horrible engages. And I, I don't know if Bjergsen's calling that. I don't know if he's calling that. But just awful engages. Like, it was not good. So... Broken Blade's a big question mark for me for his form. I think Bjergsen, yes, he did have a bad, like, uh, end of the year last year. I do think he can return to form. Um, I think I trust Bjergsen as the type of player to do that. If he doesn't, well, then that would kind of be an end of an arrow. Uh, Dardock, I am putting... A, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. I am all in on Joshua Harnett. This guy is the hope of NA. He is the only person that... Yeah, he's, he's the hope of NA. What can I say? If, if Dardock can't do it, then we're fucked. We are fucked as a region. 
uh, Kabe, good AD carry on Splice. Um, I was kind of unsure of uh, where he stacked amongst the European talent until Worlds when he was actually Splice's best performer, pretty much. Him and Humanoid. And I, I would honestly say Kabe even did that. Zerse. Zerse was the oh, best Oh, Zerse, yeah, yeah, Zerse. Uh, Zerse was nuts on Splice. Yeah. But uh, Biofrost also, uh, you know, he likes PSM. <coughs> He's good friends with Bjergsen. I think Bio is also a good player. So, yeah, I think this roster has a lot of talent. Um, there obviously could be issues, like huge blow-up issues, such as... Who the fuck? Hello. No, get, get the fuck out. Who the fuck do you think joined? Just leave, leave for five minutes. Anyways, <laughs> um, anyways so <clears throat> Broken Blade uh, is kind of like the biggest question mark of this because even though Dardock could potentially like blow up, that's some really whack like breaking point situation, which would just, I mean, unlucky, but I, I see that as like a smaller chance of happening. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of put TSM with, like, Cloud9 and Dignitas as, like, the teams with a lot of talent but variants. And I think, like, Dignitas is the highest variance of that where they could legitimately be, like, a ninth place team. Whereas I think TSM, it, it's pretty hard for them to not make playoffs, much like Cloud9. Like, I don't see them not making playoffs. But I do think that they have slightly more known quantities in Beard, Kabe, and Bio than Cloud9's uh, quantities. So Yeah, I think they theirs is the same thing as... A lot of the other teams. Cohesiveness is literally the name of the game for a lot of teams this split. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a lot of these teams the changed. Teams. Yeah. A lot of these teams changed. A lot of them brought in a lot of talent. It just depends. All these talents are used to being carries on their teams. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so let's move into. Um, so now that we've looked at all the rosters and we've discussed all the teams, my uh, we can we can talk power rankings now. And I, I will give like a power ranking, but I will talk about like why teams are in certain slots. So for me, I have Team Liquid as number one. I explained this already that, like, if everything else is unknown, I could make an argument for why Team Liquid wouldn't lose. I can say, like, oh, Team Dardock's going to be insane and uh, Brox is not going to, like, play well as a team. But that's, like, that's me putting, like, you know, my thoughts into, like, what I think will happen. And, like, that's a lot of, like, what ifs and it, it'll go this ways. Yes, when you analyze things, you want to, like, try to look forward at those things. But if you had to make a prediction based on the fact that things are unknown, you have you would have to go with Team Liquid, and that's why I, I would put Team Liquid as number one for a power ranking. Um, this is post playoffs, uh, not like regular season. Second place, um, it's a tough call for me. A lot of people put um, Cloud Nine here in second, but I think that realistically, the teams with the most talent that could reach it would be like TSM, Cloud Nine, CLG, um, and I think of those teams, TSM has the best talent to do so. But I think in theory CLG could too. It just it depends on how well TSM and C9 do. Um, I think that if I put TSM number two, I would put C9 at number three. Um, just I think they are slightly better than CLG. I would put CLG like number four uh, in that. And I think CLG is actually pretty consistently like near that slot. Now the the question here for me next is like how well will Dignitas play in this and how consistent I think 100 Thieves versus Evil Geniuses will be. Um, while I think uh, Evil Geniuses uh, has a good, like I said, if Jazuke performs well, they have a pretty clear play style. I do think uh, 100 Thieves has an advantage in the sense that Cody had a better split than Bang. Um, Medios, uh, while maybe not considered as good as Svenskeren, I do think Someday is better than Kumo. And I think Medios guiding Ryoma um, has a potential to be better than a Svenskir and Jizuke duo if Jizuke is not playing well, which is kind of what happened toward the end of the last split. So I, do, I would put 100 Thieves in that um, in that maybe 5th place spot, and then EG in the 6th place spot. 7th uh, for me would basically be Dignitas then, because I think that they will, given their roster, they, they kind of have a lot of growing pains. 8th uh, for me would then be Immortals. I think they slightly eke out FlyQuest, because um, a lot of the FlyQuest players were declining, and then FlyQuest 9, Golden Guardians 10. All right, all right. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, let me see. For me, I got Team Liquid one, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I got TSM two. I actually have CLG three. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Uh, C nine four. Mm -hmm. Uh, five. I have Hundred Thieves. Yeah. Six. I have EG. Yeah. Uh, seven. I have IMT. Okay. I mean, I take sorry. Uh, then Immortals eighth, FlyQuest nine, GGS ten. I think I can. I gotta. It's too hard for me to want to put Immortals above Dig. I think this is all based on paper. 
my heart wants to put Immortal seventh. Well, let me but... let me discuss like the swap spots then. So we'll go. Let's first talk about the top four that we both put, which is so for me it was TLTSM C nine CLG, and for you it was TLTSM CLG C nine. So I think, mm-hmm. like I said before, any of the um, two through four could swap for me in that list. Any mm-hmm. of the two through four can swap. Just depends on what you're evaluating. Um, a lot of people have C9 handedly as the number two. I disagree with that, but like I think it makes sense to say CLG is number three because C9 is going in a completely new direction, whereas CLG has a lot of components from their last roster. So it makes a lot of sense that you could say CLG is more of a strict upgrade than where C9 is, right? So if you value that kind of consistency roster roster, then maybe, you know, that's why on a power ranking you would put them uh, third. Mm-hmm. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, five uh five was where i said yeah you know, so it was 100 thieves eg i think five and six <coughs> pretty much it, most people are gonna have like 100 thieves eg they're kind of the teams where you have to like beat out in playoffs i just think 100 thieves has slightly better known quantities than eg and that's yep. literally all um seven eight nine i think seven eight nine all, also could potentially swap dig immortal fly quest um it really depends on how big of a boom or bust like dig could be um in theory like i said they could move up to top four if they were good but i don't want to like because the more i think about it again it's like okay but that that creates a lot of what ifs i do i did think that their talent would slightly eke out immortals because i just don't i can't think of like what if if immortals is a consistent team then i'm gonna put one roster like fly quest where like they have uh, certain talented players but I feel like a very undefined play style below them, but then one pretty talented team in terms of Dignitas that might clash. I would say like them and Dignitas have the most potential to switch of those two. And if Golden Guardians were to best a team, I think FlyQuest would be the most reasonable one to best. So I kind of put FlyQuest at nine there because I also think GGS and FlyQuest could potentially swap. Yeah, a lot of my decisions on where I put teams comes down to what I think their style will be. In, in More so not in their in-game style as much as like their... Um, well, I guess, but like, I feel like a lot of it comes down to synergy, synergy. Yeah. Egos, I feel like clashing. That's why I have, um, I put CLG third is cause generally I would put them fourth because they're always fourth every year. Let's be honest. They literally finished fourth the past like four splits. But I think that most successful teams in North America have top laners who don't have egos Mm -hmm. like impact uh he's a team player doesn't really have an ego uh balls back when he played didn't have an ego played for team um Hanser back when he started uh the first year didn't have an ego played for team Licorice, like, a carry, he's a pretty cool headed player yeah i feel like a lot of these teams have uh have top laners who are low low ego and get along with the team i think there's just too many difference too many differences when it comes to to TSM and, and C9 on their uh, on their teams, the different the culture shock between Sven and Vulcan and Blabber and Niski and we'll see yeah. lack of leadership. We'll see how the teams work. All right, let's move on to some predictions for Week One. So first game we have C9 versus Team Liquid. Um, I I think Team Liquid will probably take it. I think even with Poe Belter in theory they could take it. Um, Blabber could potentially shit on like Poe Belter, but. I think the rest of their team, like I said, it, it's a big synergy thing. I, I don't think Sven Vulcan take over double lift core JJ. I, I just I think that's kind of unrealistic. Uh, I don't think Niski with a new jungler is gonna super shit on Jensen unless Jensen is just so bad after Worlds for whatever reason. And I don't think Impact is gonna top difference. Or uh, sorry, Licorice is gonna top difference Impact enough for like that to be even an issue. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I think TL will take it, even if it's a struggle, even if they have a poor early game because of, like, say, Niski and Blabber do end up being a better duo than what Poe Belter does in the jungle, and he's kind of left out to dry. Uh, I think Blabber's always shown that he has a hard time closing, and with the lack of general direction from C9's roster, it, it seems hard to me, even with an early game lead, for them to close out a game versus Liquid. Yeah, I basically have the same thing. I think this game's... I think it's going to be closer than it normally would have been if Broxa was there and mm-hmm. practiced with them the entire split. Mm-hmm. I think it would end up being something... I think it's like 60-40 Team Liquid. I think C9 could easily win if they snowball and use Pobelter. But I also don't think Pobelter is going to play something that like needs to get ahead. I don't think he's going to play like a game, which he, he could, but... I think he's probably going to play something... Like, if he plays like more of a carry jungle, I think it's going to be like Kiana, something that he has got practice in in mid lane and jungle. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I think he's going to play a bit more team focused, just play around bot, and I think they just win if they can just not give up a massive lead at the start. So, yep. um, okay. So the next game after that will be CLG versus Dignitas. Um, I think CLG should win. Uh, I think Dig with Froggen versus Crown. Um, even if people thought Froggen was a better mid, better mid laner than Crown last year, it, it's not really like by a degree that Froggen would outmuscle Crown in any sense. And I think Huni can mus- outmuscle Ruin. That, that's definitely like realistic. But I think um, Wiggly was much better about playing around like and uh, if like pun- I get suppose punishing than someone like Grigney would. And I think Johnson Afro because they haven't played as much together versus I guess Stixay and Smoothie also haven't played together as much. But I do think Stixay is a strong AD carry, and I think that if a rookie came into the league, they would have to be pretty exceptional to just top Stixay off the bat. So I th- and I think overall CLG is a much more consistent team. So um, yeah, I-, I would put CLG over Dignitas in that game. I think Dig would have to really outmuscle them through top lane, um, and that mean that would take a lot of just Huni playing at his best, but also Grigney being able to keep Huni from being punished. Yep, I had the same logic, CLG. Yeah. A hundred thieves GGS. Um, I'd say a hundred thieves, unless Golden somehow team. blows blows Rio out of the water. I just I don't think Cody and Stunt just get fucked super hard. Even if they got fucked, um, I I don't think Keeft and FBI would be able to hold the lead. I think they're players that might be prone to throwing. So I, I don't know. I I can't see Dig, uh, GG winning yeah. that game. Uh, Mortals FlyQuest. Um, I'm not sure. T baby. Yeah. So I I have Immortals for this because. I do think Altec and Hakuho should be better than Wild Turtle and Ignar. But the, it's a bit predictive because I think Ignar, um, you know, got a bit carried by uh, by Upset. And I, I think Wild Turtle had a worse performance last year uh, toward the end. I, I had Wild Turtle really high in the spring last year, but it, by summer, he, he, you know, he really fell off for me. Um, I'm putting a lot of faith into Altec's kind of preparation from uh, his Korean boot camp, pretty much. And I, I trust in Hakuho to play better now that he's on a better roster. I think X Smithy should be better than Santorin. And so as there's no way Viper, I, I don't, unless so as is just doesn't give a shit. Like there's no way so, Viper can top difference. So as um, it, I just, I don't think power of evil is a punishing enough player to like, I guess Ico would have to be really bad for power of evil to like over punish him. Um, yeah. Power of evil doesn't play enough. Uh, stuff that can even take an advantage out of lane. I don't think he doesn't play. Like Power Wheel play doesn't really play to, like yeah. LeBlanc. He doesn't play Kiana, Talon. He doesn't play any of those like aggressive roamers, take over the game kind and, of players. And so, like, say he plays an Oriana and tries to like just all like lane kingdom against Ika. I think X Smithy knows how to punish that. Like, I think X Smithy is yeah. a very smart jungler and he's going to come and aid Ika in that sense. It's just, it's hard for me to see Immortals getting toppled unless like. Um, I'm way over predicting Ika and Altex abilities probably, and if so, yep. how much so as cares. Um, okay, uh, after that we have day two. So now that's only four days on Saturday, four days on Sunday. So day two is going to be Dignitas versus Evil Geniuses. Um, EG. Yeah. So I. For the same reasons. So I want to say EG because I think Johnson Johnson being a rookie, you know, he's playing against Bang and Zazel, and Frog and Jazuke, Man, th- so. This is a really interesting clash for me because this is going to be like, so Svenskiren's, I think EG's game plan, Svenskiren wants to play around Jazuke, right? Because Jazuke is a very aggressive player. And I think Froggen, if if somehow Froggen like absorbs the pressure and Huni and Kuno can't absorb Huni's pressure, I think Dignitas can take it. But I think that also relies on Grig being a play wall around Huni. If Svenskiren plays around Kumo and really punishes Huni, then I don't think Froggen, even if he's better than Jizuke, will take over the game necessarily. And I think then the factor comes in that Bang will probably be a good late game AD carry. So I think more often than not, um, EG should be able to take this. But I do think there is a very, um, there there is definitely a way that Dig takes this. But I, I think it's EG. I, I, I think it's EG. I think Svenskiren hasn't lost to Grig before. Why start now? Yeah, I just I think as long as Svenskir knows how to punish Huni and like Bang comes in well late, it, it should be pretty good because that's the only one I can see. It's a huge difference. Like Jazuke would have to harden to Froggen if they wanted like if it wasn't just Huni. So I just yeah, it's hard. Dignitas would have to outmuscle top lane a lot, and that also require a lot from uh, the jungler to play well around Huni. Okay, TSM versus Immortals. Uh, TSM. TSM. Yeah. Um. Uh, I don't know. Immortals, like in theory, I actually do think like. Uh, so as could decently match up with Broken Blade. Uh, Dar- X Smithy actually plays well against Dardoch. Like that. That's to be fair. Like- this all these games literally just get uh, come down to like on paper until we can see like yeah if these teams function well together. 
Well, because well, I can see yeah. and any team, like, a lot of these teams are just so high variance. Yeah. Last season, like, it was just a lot of, like, known quantities, like, playing together. So, like, it was pretty easy to decide, like, until we see week one, it's going to be hard to predict perfectly. I think if the Mortals had, like, a up. carry top laner in this matchup, they could potentially win it if, if their top laner was, like, a licorice or something and it was like licorice versus broken blade and next smithy was able to like punish broken blade and licorice there is like carry versus carry but i think the problem is like soez wants to absorb broken blades pressure dardock wants to you know go ham. yeah i think soez was the biggest problematic pickup for me on immortals this offseason because they got match, like the play style right well yeah he doesn't match the meta either like riot games is moving towards a meta away from like tanks yeah. and stuff like that and more to like solo lanes and less and about tank team fights to say that all of a sudden like after years so as would become a huge carry player like i think that's yeah because so as doesn't even play he plays like occasion he fit he then like averagely but he's not gonna like he plays fiora occasionally but he doesn't play he like good on carries last year is the thing. yeah and he doesn't he, he never plays like gank plank like any of the safer carries either he doesn't he like, just in recent performance, Soaz has not been the carry player. I know in historically, like he is very talented and he has been able to play carries. But in recent performance, even though it's it, like the narrative is that oh he's a tank player, I don't necessarily think that's a hundred percent true. It's just the fact that like you are shaped by your environment and like he could say as much as he wants. Like no, but I hate dog champs. I like playing carries. Well, for the last two or three years, like you're forced on tanks because your team wants you to. It kind of shapes you into like playing that style you know yeah because i think he might honestly just get fucked if they ban orn because <laughs> right. he's the only good tank in the room yeah uh c9 versus golden glue or <laughs> golden golden Guard. Guard. yeah i mean c9, c9 yeah. versus golden yeah. glue yeah. <laughs> same thing c9 yeah okay just uh, just straight c9 right. fly quest versus clg um in theory CLG. clg should but i I think it's just too hard to... Yeah, I, I don't think FlyQuest has enough consistent element. Because I was just remembering last year when Crown was playing against uh, uh, PoE on CLG, and, like, they inted their lead really hard, but, like, it was, like, Arrow got caught, and, like, Crown also inted. It was a lot of things, and I was, like, thinking, like, what if CLG ints into FlyQuest? But I was, like, I don't think Ruin's going to int that hard into Viper. Um, I think, like, Wiggly would have to be super out jungle. But the thing is, like, CLG also has Stixie and Smoothie. And, like, Stixie and Smoothie are much more consistent than Wild Turtle Ignar. So, like... It's kind of unreasonable to say like FlyQuest would win here. Yeah. So I. Yeah, I think it's just such a wonky team. Like, I think FlyQuest in my head is just bad. That Golden Guardians had to put together such a terrible, like under, like weird roster to be worse than them. All right, Evil Geniuses versus a hundred thieves. I don't know. So this is the one where it's like. Because this is the 5-6 for me, and it was the 5-6 for you, too, where it's like, I slightly value the Someday Meteos Cody, like, slightly higher. I think 100 Thieves wins solely through easier to, like, It's just easier for them to, like, yeah. Because I think it's much easier for EG to int into 100 Thieves. Yeah, 100 Thieves also doesn't have as bad of, like, a communication barrier. Okay, so... As much as, like, Jizuke, Bang... And then, so, like, so we have Kumo versus Someday. Like neither are played around top lane, and Someday will like ma win that. Like over time, the, the longer the game goes, the better Someday is in that matchup. We have Medio Svenskeren. Mm -hmm. We we know Medios like we 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 rate Medios slightly higher, right? But it's Medios with a rookie jungler versus Jizuke, who did not look very good last year. I think Jizuke has to perform well. If Jizuke doesn't perform well, there's no chance EG can win this. Because I'm looking at the bot lanes, and I would have to put Cody stunt slightly above bang zazel because zazel like this is a new bot lane they don't they don't play together zazel was declining last year um jizuke has to have a monster performance here yep yeah this has to be 100 thieves then uh, i'm just rating that slightly higher because like the top diff um and then like yeah even though ryoma's a rookie it had like sven jizuke really would have to super punish that jizuke uh mm. ryoma would have to play very poorly okay tl versus tsm that that actually is a game this weekend will it's monday uh yeah i think tsm could i want to say team i don't liquid, know which but one's gonna win <laughs> i i want to say team liquid just on where they seem to get the best of tsm recently but also uh well also because tl only change one player and if po walter's playing well all these guys have played with po walter except for core jj yeah so it, it's not good oh okay. and so, I guess. so let's okay so we'll do two well ignoring the jungle right now let's go lane for lane so impact broken blade i think impact right now is better um i think yeah, impact, especially after so, like multiple international tournaments this year playing against the shy multiple i think tournaments. impact has actually become super good yeah he's played against the shy many times now like he knows what to do i i 
like he went from broken blade like just destroying him in spring split to top die against the shy so it's it's yeah. hard for me to say broken blade will be better than impact in this scenario even though um when they met up in spring broken blade was that much better it just it's given everything that happened in 2019 i can't see impact like declining in form um okay so let's look at jensen bjergsen here so Bjergsen is coming off a really bad 2019 summer performance. Um, he did not look good um, in the playoffs. He did not look good in the final three weeks of uh, LCS regular season. He didn't look good in Gauntlet. Um, Jensen also didn't look amazing <laughs> in the uh, final uh, in the playoffs, and he also didn't look great at Worlds. So I don't know what to make of it because, you know, I want to say like. Because I think it's interesting uh, how long that, like, um, there's, like, pockets of League where, like, Jensen, I do do think, was a better player than Bjergsen. And I have no idea going into this split if this is going to be one of those pockets. Because yep. I think Bjergsen actually, like, um, in spring definitely played better than Jensen. And the beginning of summer he did. And I think that in uh, in 2018 summer, Bjergsen was also playing better uh, than Jensen in some aspects. But then if you go back to 2017, there's a lot of pockets where a lot of people think Jensen was playing better than Bjergsen. So I actually have no idea going into this split, uh, this matchup, you know, who's going to take this. Uh, do you have any insight into that? Um, I just... Lane for lane... Uh, it's hard for me to go lane by lane and see who wins because... Yeah, it doesn't work because then I would have to put FlyQuest a lot higher than some of these teams. Right, right. Well, we're, we're, this is the start of the process. The start of the process. Yeah, first generally, time. I think this literally comes down to if Dardot can snowball like he normally does and abuse Pobelter and then take over the game. Because well, I don't think uh, Team Liquid's good enough with Pobelter to come back from a hard stomp early. So well, we'll the other thing is I think core is better than bio and Kabe is not lane dominant like double lift, right? So the thing is like just naturally um, the way they play, in theory, the team liquid bot lane should be ahead, right? So like, yeah, Dardoch would have to like significantly play around Broken Blade, I think, or Bjergsen if Jensen and Bjergsen are opting into a matchup where they fight a lot. Um, and I, I don't know if Dardoch is enough to topple Impact because Impact's played against Dardoch before and, and they didn't get toppled by Echo Fox. Like, you know that that didn't happen, um, and then if we factor into Team Liquid's like jungler, I I don't think that like so now we factor in like Pobelter. If Pobelter really fucks up like a mid matchup or a top matchup, yeah, that you know something bad could happen. Same thing with Broxa, but um, I think like TL would really have to opt into that. And I I don't know if they necessarily would. I think they might still stick to like a bot side oriented plan. Um, now this is with the caveat that TL isn't going to be like experimental. You know, if TL is experimental, then yeah, of course TSM could win, but. Given like what TL strengths are, if they are in a bot oriented plan, I, I don't necessarily think TSM can win. Uh, just because mid lane's kind of a toss up, I think TL has the advantage top lane. I do think TSM has an advantage in the jungle, but uh, early game TL's bot lane should be ahead here, uh -huh. and that should snowball in theory. So I I would give it a slight edge to uh, TL here as long as they're not being experimental. Yep. I hope TSM wins though. I hope TSM smashes TL. I'm not a TSM fan. Just Give me some more Dardock. Let's go. All right. Uh, any closing thoughts here? It's going to be an interesting split. I really want to we'll give... I think I'll give better insight once the, we start yeah. seeing I these mean, teams. Right now, we pretty much have to be predictive. and we have to This is really right predictive now. without knowing anything. Yeah. Like, this is non-insiders giving, like, predictions. I will say, after watching a Hollywood <clears> League, um, they, EG was bragging about their scrims. Or, not bragging, but the director, the guy was like, oh, yeah, you know, I want to be cocky, but, like, our, our scrims are, like, pretty good against some teams you know he, he was pretty confident about the 100 thieves matchup so i don't know interesting to say the least we'll see yeah we will see anyways this is going to be jack signing out yeah so uh